Hello, I'm the Zombie J. And it's time for another video. A rant and a lamentation. So, Bionicle G2. Wasn't that good, was it? I've. When Bionicle G2 was cancelled, I uh, was in tears in some ways. Because it was the death of Bionicle for the second fucking time. And I had, I, I had a video, about 30 minutes or so long. Uh, I don't have that video anymore. I lost the files. I've lost all old files. And they're gone. So I can't re-upload that shit. I'm never going to, so fuck it. Um... And yeah, that was just, yeah, I remember uh, just being, just tearing up at the fact that Bionicle ended for a second fucking time, and it really pissed me off, and it really saddened me, and yeah, I almost wanted to kill myself because Bionicle ended twice now, but I chose not to, so here we are today, and well... Looking back on that, uh, on the cancellation of G2 and my reaction towards it, it was definitely foolish of me to, uh, yeah, react the way I did. <laughs> now, talking about G2, you know, there's not really much you can say about it anymore. We've all heard it, you know. Uh, there were many reasons why it was, it was canned. It wasn't selling as well as LEGO was hoping. They uh, The budget got slashed. Uh, they expected us, the the OG Bionicle fans, that have been around since, well, since the dawn of Bionicle, uh, to basically market the, the uh, well, yeah, they, they expected us to uh, market the, uh, uh, G2 uh, to uh, a younger generation of Bionicle fans and it completely faltered. It faltered and it failed and yeah. Expecting us to uh, do basically Legos work for them was not a good strategy to be honest. It's, it's stupid and yeah. Now I have all the sets with the two, uh, the two, uh, uh, not poly bags, but, um, well, I have one of the poly bags that was released, and I have two foil packs released, which were the little skull scorpion thing, and the, uh, uh, Agil creature of light, hawk of light, and, um, I've had multiples of a number of sets, um, so... Bionicle G2, um, at its core, you know, it had decent ideas here and there for the story, but at the same time, the story was muddled down, it was watered down, it was kind of, uh, butchering the legacy of the original story, the original first three years of Bionicle, and in a way, that's disappointing. Um, the story for G2 was not really well received, it was kind of, uh, dumbed down, it was, uh, being catered towards later generations of kids, um, at the time, in 2015 and 2016, and it just didn't work. The story was bullshit, honestly. So, it was not that good, and I don't like it, to be honest, I don't like the story. Uh, it's, I saw it as just kind of a, uh, more retarded version of the, uh, Toa going on to collect the masks and then becoming the Nuva, well, the G2 Nuva, the Uniters. And, uh, in 2017, we probably would have gotten another wave of Toa plus Makuta, and uh, we didn't get that because Lego are stupid. The possibility of a G3 is, is not ruled out, someone said on LEGO, um, but who knows if it'll actually happen. Now, we did get a little brick built in the 90 Years of Play set, 
as well as the GWP that seems to have been a controversy behind it, but that's the story for another day. Where G2 really falls flat is the, uh, is, it, is the, uh, the story and, and, and some of the designs of the sets. The sets like Qatar and, and, uh, uh, what's it called? Skull Scorpio had decent ideas in the sets. They were still pretty good sets. But, uh, like, Skull Scorpio had an interesting trigger action that, that lunges the tail to clip, and it was an interesting uh, design choice. But in, on paper, it was interesting, it worked, but in practice, it was also kind of just, what the fuck? People have made better versions of uh, Skull Scorpio, like Jang did a version of Skull Scorpio that was pretty cool. Um... The Skull Villains definitely had their uh, quirks. They weren't that... They weren't bad, but they certainly weren't perfect. You know, they had their uh, little tidbits of um, interesting here and there. I liked Skull Grinder. I liked... Uh, what's his face? Skull Basher. Those were probably my two favorites of the, of the three, or of the five. Um, Skull Warrior... Massable set. Skull Slicer was just kind of okay for the most part. The Toa Masters. The Masters, they were great. They, they brought back gear functions, but the knobs, but some people had problems with those because they're not actual gears. Shut up. So, um, but it was nice. You get to pose the Toa in any way, shape, or form. You get to use the gear function as well on the back, and Things were fun. They got to knock off the masks with the with the eye stalk in the back of the head, and also hook uh, portions on some of the weapons and whatnot. It was a it was a fun time. Dual functionality with the weapons is fun too. The vibrant colors are back with the Toa, and the masters at least, and even the protectors had vibrant colors. And then yeah, the, their uh, stud shooters were pretty interesting. I mean, Korgod did not need. Uh, a stud shooter built into her torso area. That's just weird. Uh, but hey, it worked. Um, and the skull spiders, while being massive little cretins, um, they're just uh, kind of eh, you know? Um, as well as the little traps, the little bear traps from 2016 that would become uh, the elemental beasts. Now with the beasts, um, the elemental beasts, I liked uh, Umrak the Destroyer. That was a, a nice kind of uh, transformation, a bestial transformation of um, uh, Umrak the Hunter. Now, Umarak the Hunter was already a pretty damn cool set. Character-wise, it was alright. Um, and the Destroyer version, pretty fucking uh, killer, you know? Um, and obviously you get all these masks you can collect. And I have all the masks except for the little uh, promo ones like the, the uh, Mask of Water that is all translucent. I don't have that because it's, I'm not going to pay 500 fucking dollars for that. That's stupid. <sighs> I'd be lucky if I got it for like $10. Um, but yeah. The Elemental Beasts, uh, they had, they, they were good for the most part, but at the same time they had design choices that weren't very well received. But they were still uh, pretty solid sets. Um, and Ikimu, uh, the little protector Ikimu, uh, the mask maker, uh, was, he was just built like a protector, he was pretty fine. Um, the, uh, Toa version of Ikimu was, uh, pretty cool. I mean, yeah, yeah, the translucent, uh, color and mixed with the gold and whatnot, it was not entirely... A treat for the eye, but I actually like the look of a Kimu 2016. Um, um, some people claim that it looks bad, 
but you're wrong. I think it looks fine. Um, but, you know. Now, Akimu, uh, Mask Maker version, uh, did have the gear function in the back and on the butt. Um, so that could have been uh, a uh, design choice for the next wave of Toa sets that would come out in 2016, uh, 2017, but we didn't get that because reasons. <sighs> Lego can be stingy sometimes, you know? Uh, the Toa Uniters were pretty awesome sets. There was a little too much uh, silver going on again. You know, um, gold was prominent as well. The creatures were pretty cool. We got to see some wildlife in uh, Bionicle G2 as well. So, Katar was definitely a uh, problem of a set, but it was still a lot of good parts, you know? And obviously, combining the Uniter Toa with their uh, respective creatures and their golden masks, and it, it was fun. Bionicle G2 definitely had some fun ideas with some of the sets, with all the sets, if anything. And I liked the sets. The uh, Toa Masters definitely had a nice vibrant colors, and the Uniters tried to um, fix some of the problems with the uh, with the Masters, but there were some people that were not well pleased by these uh, Uniter sets. How are you able to find the Uniter sets? Well, apparently, um, I guess the the last wave of Bionicle G2 was only at Toys R Us for some reason. Distribution was definitely a mess. Uh, I'd like to think that G2 was kind of a mess in general because look at all the concept art, for example. Uh, all that was gone to waste. Now, it was uh, all collected into the Art of Lego Bionicle book. I don't have that because I'm not going to spend thousands of dollars on, on that. It's just stupid. I'd be lucky if I get that book for like $20. Um, but it was a... Yeah, there was like, like only a hundred of those printed. Yeah, thanks, Lego. Um, Journey to One. Yes, the four episode plus a prologue. It was decent. It was pretty good. It, it, well, it wasn't pretty good. It was meh. It was it was decent, you know. Uh, the voice acting can be a little cheesy sometimes, you know. The robotic sounding voices with the voice filter thing, I guess. It's just kind of a neat idea, but it, in practice, it doesn't work. Um, the uh, the colors, the artwork, the um, well, the art style and animation of the uh, of the the journey to one was pretty damn awesome. Good job to the Volta. I think that's what they're called. Um, but yeah. Now, G two was definitely prematurely uh, detonated. It was uh, canned right after. Uh, journey to one's ending and yeah that pissed me off because yeah as some of you who have probably watched that video that I've posted back in 2016 um, if you've seen that video if you recall I was definitely really upset with that and yeah again with the story the story was was just bleh not that good. Um, I have the books. I have the the, uh, the three chapter books. And they were okay for the most part. I read the third chapter book in less than a day. <laughs> and um, it was, those books were okay. I mean, Ryder Windham is a uh, legend of a writer. Get it? <laughs> um, but, yeah. And the uh, graphic novels, the two graphic novels that were released, there was supposed to be a third one. We didn't get that because fuck us, I guess. Um, well, the graphic novels had problems, but they were still pretty okay, I guess. So, the, um, 
the, uh, what's it called, the activity book, not as good as the Bionicle G1 activity book from 2003, yeah, that was pretty fun, I still have my original beat up copy of it, and I never used the, uh, activity book, I never, uh, colored in it or anything, or drew lines to whatever, there's no point, <laughs> um, that came with an exclusive mask, and it wasn't even exclusive. It was not exclusive. It was the little protector mask that came with Ikimu and Kulta. That's not exclusive, you retards. What the fuck? <sighs> Give us an exclusive, uh, like, I, I don't know, a uh, gold with fading to translucent purple version of that. That would have been much better. That would have been an exclusive to have. But we didn't. Because, like I said, fuck us, apparently. But yeah, the story was the biggest uh, downfall, the biggest problem with uh, Bionicle G2. The sets definitely, because they're CCBS, uh, people had problems with these because it's not uh, construction. Uh, G1 construction or anything like that, get over it. CCBS definitely had its, its, its faults, its, uh, uh, there was definitely, uh, parts that I had broke, broke, they broke, some parts broke, and, um, it was not, it was not fun, so, but, you know, mostly because of age, I guess, the parts get more brittle with age or something like that. And I, as a result, um, one of the little uh, bone pieces, the four long bone pieces that uh, the that were in yellow from Aquagon from Hero Factory, <laughs> joint was snap. <sighs> oh well. Now, Bionicle G two again. The sets were uh, pretty good for the most part. They definitely had some nice parts. There are some parts that you can't entirely use. There was some greebling in like the torso armor for the uh, uniters and a Kimu, of course, a Kimu uniter Toa thing. Um, poly bags, nice to have poly bags and promo uh, foil packs. You know the uh, creature of light and uh, skull scorpion. Those were cool. And also there was two uh, magazines that were over in Poland or something like that. Uh, Bionicle Magazine 1 and 2, which had those two uh, foil packs. Those would have been nice to have over here in uh, America and whatnot, but you know. Um, but, hey, at least there's PDFs of those, so what can you do? Um, the music. The music for Bionicle G2, there's some pretty good music, you know, bits of orchestral and some uh, guitar if thrown in here and there and some some tracks, uh, some electronics strewn through here, um, synthetic stuff. Uh, the, the soundtracks for uh, the two app games, which were not that good app games, honestly. I, I played Mask of Creation and it was pretty fun. For the most part, never really cared to play Mask of Control because it wasn't really. I, I only liked the music from both games, which were great. the The music for Journey to One was pretty good, but I don't think we got all of the tracks uh, that were composed for that by Mike Rasnick. Why didn't he post all the songs? Come on, Mike. Why didn't you post all the songs? Uh, I mean, unless six songs was all you recorded. Okay, sure, whatever. Point is, the music is great. Um, I uploaded the soundtracks for the two games and the uh, Journey to One, as well as a kind of a remastered, quote-unquote, version of the 2015 Animations theme song thing. And, um... Yeah, the music, for the most part, is pretty good. The marketing. Oh boy, the marketing was a bit of a problem. The, because... The, some of the, commer the commercials just seem kind of a bit...
quirky and weird. Like the one commercial that for 2015 that was basically promoting the app game. Um, you have this one instance where Kopako was uh, skiing and then he was floating in midair, laser blasting <laughs> it's from his fucking shield. And like, what? That's not what Kopaka does. What the fuck is wrong with you? Are these people high? What the hell? Uh, and then, and then Liwa uh, swings around and then slices a skull spider in half. Wow, dismemberment. Where have we seen that before in Bionicle? Uh, well, in the Creeps from the Deep um, short movie, you see a tentacle being sliced. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> uh, other commercials, like for the set commercials for 2016 and, uh, 2015, they were a dime a dozen, I guess, they were alright. Some of the marketing was stupid, you know, the 2015 animations, you know, starting with The Legend, which I guess you could call as Episode Zero, um, all the way to Episode 18. Yeah, I have one dude doing the whole voice work, and it just came off as weird and lame and stupid. Now, the only plus side to this it sounds like a uh, a uh, a father is telling his kid a story in a way, you know, and he has to play the the voice of every single fucking character. But hey, whatever. It still sounds kind of. Each episode was a little bite-sized and short, uh, like, a, like a minute and a half uh, for each episode, I guess. I mean, those animations, it looked like uh, Mucha Lucha had a baby, and it shout out Bionicle for some reason, Bionicle G2. Um, the animation was okay, it was supposed to represent a Flash animation, um, but it was... Uh, or it was supposed to mimic flash animation, but it honestly didn't work that well, but I mean, I kind of liked the flash animations. I didn't really uh, care for them that much, but they were okay for the most part. Voice acting was a bit cheesy. Um, and of course, you know, people being salty that G2 uh, even came out to begin with, you know, some people in the Bionicle community are such crybabies, they thought that G2 was uh, basically uh, tarnishing the uh, legacy of the original Bionicle G1, and well, yay, it's cancelled, rejoice, fuck you. There's no reason to have to be so rotten inside. You cunt! How dare you! G2, for the most part, was not good. Uh, there were some... The, the, the sets were probably the only good thing about the set. And, uh, the... Uh, the uh, Bionicle G2 and the music as well. But even the sets had their uh, uh, problems, you know? But you can overlook those problems easily by just using the parts in your own mocks, revamping the Toa, revamping the beasts, revamping everything and making things seem more interesting. You can be more creative that way with the parts. Um, this whole, this, and, and let's be honest, this whole, the East Hero Factory parts, shut the fuck up, it doesn't matter. CCBS is a brilliant system, it works, it's practical, and crybabies out there are bitching about uh, the hero factory parts. Just shut the fuck up. Go fuck yourself. Fuck you. <sighs> now, when G2 ended again, I was distraught. I was uh, just upset. I hated LEGO for a time. Still kind of hate them because they canceled G1! Oh boy, it's a paradox type of thing. I, it Honestly, when it comes down to it, it is what it is. 
So, and sometimes you just gotta man up and move on. So, um, that's basically how it is. I, for the most part, have moved on, you know. I've, uh, rebuilt some old mocks of mine. Um, and just kind of, you know, been posting Bionicle related music as well as some other music on YouTube for others to enjoy and those Bionicle podcasts, which were pretty cool. Greg Farshty uh, doing five of those, and then Tony Wedgwood narrating this two-part system. The Rising and the Truth, of course. And, well, I just keep playing Bionicle the game for the PS2 because I can. <laughs> it's easy! It's easier than Call of Duty Finest Hour. I mean, come on. Let's be honest. Bionicle the game... I'll talk about that in another video. Um, but again, Bionicle G2, in all honesty, TBH, to be honest, it was not good. <laughs> so, it had its problems, it had its downfalls, it had its pitfalls, it had its everything. But, when you look back on it, there, there was much worse that LEGO could have done. Some say that G2 was the laziest LEGO line ever, and I think that attributes to um, LEGO basically relying on us to promote the the franchise with, um, to promote Bionicle G2 for them onto the uh, kids of 2015 and 2016. Uh, yeah, that's, that's debatable, but at the same time, it's, it's stupid. Why rely on us, the original fans, to uh, do that? Uh, we're, we're relying on each other and ourselves to promote Bionicle to the most, uh, for, to, the, to the nth degree for the most part. We do our best to keep the spirit of Bionicle alive and well. And honestly, I feel like Bionicle will never truly die as long as we keep it alive, folks. Come on. So, let's do it. This, the, the future of Bionicle is ours. Let's make it a good one. Hands down, let's make it a good one. So there you go. That is my rant and lamentation of Bionicle G2. I know there could have been a lot more yelling, a lot more swearing probably, but at the end of the day, it is what it is, you know? So, that's all I have to say about that. I have more rant videos in the works. Prepare for... Yeah, prepare yourselves for some anger and edginess, <laughs> if you like that sort of thing. I don't fucking know. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for more videos. I am the Zombie J. I'll see you folks there. Have a good fucking day, and peace.